if you're a superhero mom, to be able to have that purse on the go that has like every single thing that you may need while you are out and about, that is a game changer. In your home, it is the junk drawer. Hi, I'm Paige Killian, and I'm passionate about helping busy moms of littles get organized in three simple steps. So here's today's organization motivation. Hi there. Welcome back to another episode of the Moms Organization Motivation Podcast. I'm Paige Killian, and today I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite spaces to organize in style, your junk drawer. Now, I'm an organizer, and typically we don't want junk associated with anything that we talk about. But if you're a superhero mom, to be able to have that purse on the go that has like every single thing that you may need while you are out and about, that is a game changer. In your home, it is the junk drawer. And the junk drawer is a place where you can have all the little randoms that life may bring to you that you have a need for and put them in one spot. And the key to a good drunk drawer, dr drunk, drunk drawer? Hmm. <laughs> We're not going to go there. The key to a good junk drawer is keeping it unjunky. And I'm going to tell you how to do that. So, uh, you know, we've talked about the three E's in the past, and I want to tell you what I think is a great way to use those three E's for your junk drawer. And here it is. First of all, I want you to imagine that whole um, Mary Poppins scene where she has the carpet bag and she starts pulling out all these incredible things. The only difference, because I'm guessing that your junk drawer is probably not a bottomless pit of a carpet bag, is you're probably going to be best suited for a junk drawer in a space that you're in all the time. I feel like that's a kitchen for most of us moms. And also to find a fairly shallow drawer. So we don't need a big, giant, deep carpet bagger <laughs> drawer. So I have told you in uh, the very first episode, we talked about the three E's philosophy, just being a strategy to just out of the gate, have an idea and a plan and a strategy for getting whatever space you want to have organized done quickly. And so uh, I talked about how it's the essentials, enhancements, and extras, those are your three E's, and it's the essential purge, the enhancement of the sale or the donation, and then finally that extra, that cherry on top is putting in the proper organization where you're styling your space. So it's the purge, the sale, and the style. Decide what items you want to have quickly at a glance near you in your most used room, and then that's going to be your essential. Your enhancement, what's going to add style or value to that is purge that clutter and you're going to relocate the items that you really are not using that often. I'm going to tell you right now, that's going to be an example of your overflow items like your batteries or your first aid stuff. You're going to have different spaces for those, but you might have some things that you might find in a first aid kit in that junk drawer and you might have some batteries on hand. And then finally, the final E, your extra. This is actually when you're styling. This is typically what we do for all of the extras is styling that space and organizing it so that you have the proper organizers in place. In this case, we're going to talk about drawer organizers and where you can find the best ones. And that's it. Okay. So to unjunk that junk drawer, once you have made the essential decision to pick the spot that it's most used and you have decided which items you're going to keep in there, you are going to do the big purge because if you already have one you probably have got it cluttered up with things that maybe you found that you're not using that often and they belong in a different space and if you're starting from scratch or if you really do just want to totally start over i'll give you some suggestions for things that you might want to keep in there i already mentioned batteries you don't want to have a ton a huge assortment of batteries in your go-to junk drawer the drawer that's going to be there on hand in the center of your world you're going to want to have you know, some of those that you're not using very often, like I'm guessing you're not using the nine volt or the C batteries or the D batteries, to be honest. I don't even know if the, I think I'm saying the correct batteries here, uh, but you might want to have the double A's and the triple A's. Those I feel like we're using all the time. But again, you're going to want your overflow to be in a different location. And perhaps if you're talking batteries, that might be in a laundry room or it might be in a garage space if you have a toolbox somewhere nearby if you have another drawer that's in kind of an in-between room that is maybe an area or even a desk if you have an, a little extra space in a desk drawer that's a space that you might want to have your 
overflow of batteries, for example. Another thing I said was a first aid kit. You might want to just have some band-aids on hand. Ones that, you know, if you're in the kitchen and you're chopping up vegetables and your junk drawer is nearby, you might want to be able to grab in case you have a little slip of the knife. Uh, or if you've got a paper cut as you're sorting through your mail piles, you want to have a Band-Aid on hand in case you need to bandage that up quickly. All right, so those are great ideas. Additionally, you don't want to have a ton of paperwork in your junk drawer because then it can get junky and we do not want that to happen. So instead, I simply keep, a lot of us don't have phone books anymore, but I keep my kids' directory that's from their school. I keep that on hand in the junk drawer and it just sits toward the back. I have a pretty deep one. And so I do have a section for menus, some of our favorite go-tos, although a lot of times those are digital now too. So that's a great way to clear out that area is to have digital menus and be able to look up restaurants you want to order from. But I do have a few of those or maybe coupons that I want to be using or maybe the directory that you might have for your church or school. That's a good idea to have there. That's really all the paperwork that I keep in mind. This is a great place to have a few pencils, perhaps a pencil sharpener as well, or lead if you've got a mechanical pencil, maybe backup eraser. This is a great spot to just have a couple of these. So, um, additionally, you might want to have some paper clips in there, some pins, some Sharpies. The other things are scissors. So maybe you don't have all of your arts and crafts scissors. Maybe you have some cool jagged edge ones or scalloped edge ones, but this is a good spot to have an extra pair of scissors. Additionally, tape. So this is where you might have some, just some scotch tape if you need to slap that on a project you're working on. Or perhaps this is a place that you have um, even uh, shipping tape. This might be the place that you're opening envelopes if you have a letter cutter. You additionally, if you're opening envelopes, not only do you want to have the letter cutter, but you might want to have some stamps on hand too. I do have a, a mini stapler. So our big stapler and our hole puncher and things like that that are larger are in the office supply slash arts and crafts homework area for the kids in our activity closet. Can't wait to talk to you soon about our activity closet. So those big things are there, but I do have a little mini stapler in case I need that. I do have two kinds of glues in my junk drawer. One is just the regular Elmer's glue, but I do have some fabric glue. So there you have it. That's a lot of things. You know, maybe for you, it makes sense to have an extra set of keys, an extra garage door opener, perhaps a brush or something. Although I don't highly recommend brushing your hair if yours is in the kitchen. <laughs> so give that a second thought. Um... I think, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that. I think those are a lot of different examples. Some of those live in my drawer and then obviously the overflow live in other designated areas that I mentioned. So once you decide what you're going to put in there, you're going to purge the clutter and any trash and any extra packaging around these items. Let's say maybe you have, a, you bought a set of two or three pack of some of these items like tape. Just take the packaging off and just put the one or two there, or if you only have room for one, put one there and put the other stuff in an overflow area. And actually we're getting into the third E, which is the styling of that space with organizers. I'll go ahead and tell you, I love going to the container store because they have lots of expandable ones that really can fit well, or you can get the individual dividers. If you can get the smaller ones, this is a great place for those paper clips that don't have a box to go in, or the rubber bands that might get a little crazy out of control, you want to put those in a little square. All right. So um, I would just highly recommend looking on Amazon or popping into the container store or Target or even Michael's because they have a lot of great organizers around their arts and crafts area that you can put inside of a drawer. Before you leave to go purchase these items or make an Amazon order, give it a quick little measure. And I just, it popped into my hand that we also have a ruler in that drawer. So that's great. Uh, use that ruler. I always have a tape measure on me because I'm an organizer and constantly out and about, but also just make sure that you are measuring this because even if it's expandable, sometimes one side of the expandable drawer organizer doesn't fit. So you don't even get the option to expand it and pull it apart because it doesn't fit the other way. Um, and don't be afraid to actually turn it in a different position than maybe it was advertised. I actually found that two drawer organizers that I love at the container store for a smaller drawer, 
if I turn it the opposite direction than it's sort of marketed on the picture and in the video, I can fit two of them in the larger drawers that I organize. And if I had only stuck to the way it was advertised, I would have written it off right away because I thought, oh, that wouldn't fit. But once you have those exact measurements and always make sure you are giving just a hair extra because sometimes it doesn't take into account maybe the little lip or the edge on the end of it, make sure also that you are measuring how deep the drawer is, not just deep from the front to the back of the drawer, but how tall the height of it is, um, because that's where you can get into trouble if you are picking a very shallow drawer. Although they do make shallow drawer organizers, specifically if you go to the container store, you can actually go to the makeup area. So if you are doing um, makeup that is like a smaller what am I thinking? The smaller brushes and the smaller eyeliners, for example, or the little containers or your lipsticks or things where they're laying down, not the tall stand-up kind, but the laying down ones, they will have lots of drawer organizers there that are very shallow because those typically are in vanities. So in bathrooms, you might have a separate vanity. And when you pull that drawer out, it is going to be shallower than a typical one. So it's really important to measure the width, the length or the depth of that drawer and also the height to make sure that you don't get too deep of a drawer organizer for that particular drawer that you're going to name your unjunky junk drawer. All right, I think that's about it. Quickly looking over my bullet points here, but I think we've nailed it. That's not so bad, right? Okay, I hope you guys are inspired to create a junk drawer for yourself so you can tap into those multitasking mom superpowers of having everything there. I always say a stylish mom is always prepared. If you want to have great style, do everything with style. Add an unjunky junk drawer to your kitchen or wherever you're spending lots of your time and you are going to get some serious mom points for having everything you need at a moment's glance. Hey, thanks for watching this video. For more resources to organize and style your busy life in three simple steps, head over to everythingwithstyle.com and connect with me on Instagram at everythingwithstylemom. Don't forget to check out the Mom's Organization Motivation Podcast over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, any of your favorite platforms. And if you loved this video, it would make me so happy if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. Thanks so much for watching and... Happy to work